Hi pilots, welcome back to the training uh, series on the Arma 3 Super Hornet. Uh, today we're in the beta version of the Super Hornet because I want to show some of the autopilot functionality. And that is only available as of uh, September 28, 2021 in the beta version. All right, first thing we're going to look at is ATC. Need a key bound for that. Uh, options, controls. Go ahead and pick the um, whoop, configure add-ons and the Super Hornet, and down here at the bottom, automatic throttle control. I've bound mine to the Bravo key. So you can think of automatic throttle control simply as cruise control for the airplane. Right now we're flying about 220 some knots. I'm gonna hit B. That's gonna kick on the ATC. You can see as indicated there with the ATC, that automatic throttle control is on, and it's now gonna hold us at 221 uh, indefinitely. Uh, it won't turn off no matter what we do to the airplane here control inputs, pitches, whatever. It's going to maintain that speed as much as it can. Um, no matter what I do to the throttle, I'm moving the throttle like crazy right now, it doesn't move. All right, I'm going to disengage it. I'm going to kick in the burner. So we're going really fast and our speed is, you know, rising rapidly. And then I'll kick it on while that speed is screaming like that. There, turned it on at about 325. And you can see uh, the pilot's doing some work there to stabilized but he very quickly captured that speed and got it uh, where we needed it to be okay that's it for automatic throttle control let's take a look now at the autopilot functionality so up here on the UFC up front controller we're going to go ahead and click AP for the autopilot menu that brings up this menu here and let me just pause so we don't get too far away to talk about what's on this menu R alt stands for uh, radar altitude hold B alt stands for barometric altitude hold. F pat is flight path angle hold or flight path attitude hold. It's listed as both in the NADOPS menu, so I believe they're interchangeable. Roll uh, will set a, a roll angle, a, a, a angle of the wings, and it'll hold that. Ground track is not functional in the mod right now, as near as I can tell. And then heading will set a heading. Now. R alt and B alt. The difference between these two is barometric altitude hold. If we set our barometric altitude hold, say at 4,000 feet, the plane is going to stay at 4,000 feet irregardless of terrain underneath it. Radar uh, altitude hold takes into account the ground underneath it. So if we were to set 4,000 feet in radar altitude hold and then the ground started to raise underneath us to get higher, above sea level, then the airplane would, the computer will climb the airplane in order to maintain 4,000 feet from the ground, um, is essentially in front of the airplane a little ways is where the radar tracks, and it'll hold 4,000 feet above that ground as the ground comes up. Then as the ground undulates back down, the airplane will uh, drop its nose and maintain 4,000 feet. In barometric altitude, it's going to just stay 4,000 feet above sea level no matter what happens with the ground underneath it. So that could cause a problem. For instance, if you had it set to 4,000 feet and they're, you know, two miles in front of us is a 6,000 foot mountain, well, you're going to smack right into that mountain if you just leave it on. Uh, and we'll demonstrate those when we get back over there towards the land. That's the difference on those two. Now, the other thing I should know, radar, altim uh, radar altitude is only available uh, below 5,000 feet. So if I put us in a climb here, climb through 5,000, in a moment you'll see that radar alt will no longer be selectable it'll disappear and uh, once you dive back down under 5,000 feet it will then be available again <clears throat> um, oh CNI here we'll just go to the previous back to that previous page and then we can go to AP again to go back to our autopilot page you can see we passed through 5,000 I'll go ahead and put us in a dive and now radar altimeter or radar altitude is no longer there. And then when we go back below 5,000, it's now available again. All right, I'm going to get us fairly straight and level here, right about there. And I'm going to go ahead and click radar alt. And boom, that's going to hold us. You see that number right there, 3818? That's uh, what our altitude was when I clicked that. And that's going to hold that altitude uh, as long as it can based on, you know, as long as we have enough speed. If our speed drops too low, we'll stall. It'll keep putting the nose up. That'll exacerbate the problem, and we'll eventually fall out of the sky. But um, in theory, it will hold this altitude. And uh, since we have our ATC on, the airspeed will be good. We'll hold this until we run out of fuel. Bar uh, barometric is going to do the same thing because, uh, whoop, 
we are it, there's zero ground level below us we're above the sea so they're the same thing right now um, I'm gonna go ahead and click that off I'll put us into a roll right there and then click roll boop and that's gonna that's gonna hold our roll there and it's gonna hold this roll forever and you'll notice when I clicked roll it also kicked on the um, flight path angle hold so that's gonna hold that nose position there as well which is in a slight dive so right now with those two options selected it's going to hold us in a uh, this bank angle with a slight nose dive I'm gonna kick off the flight path and now the nose is really dropping um, but it's still holding that roll angle I'm adding some back stick here to get that nose up level and it will hold this roll um, as long as you can but I'm, I'm giving a fair amount of back pressure here to the stick to keep this roll so I've got that back pressure I'm gonna get that back pressure in to get us about level and then click flight path angle hold and now now we're in a nose uh, a climbing attitude and that roll and it's gonna hold that we can turn the turn the roll off um, even out the plane here and it will still hold that uh, nose high attitude now the real jet uh, or in arma I'm sorry in the jet there's only certain tolerances of inputs you can put in if you put in too much input these channels are going to turn off but it doesn't seem to be modeled in arma so I'll kick that off I'll give it a really aggressive climb angle here of about uh, let's say 25 kick that back on Uh, it may have a tolerance it may not allow that high there we go and that'll hold there now one other thing that I'll demonstrate with the flight path uh, hold is let's see here more or less uh, level here I'm gonna turn off the automatic throttle control and I'm gonna add power and you'll see the nose is going to naturally just rise because of the power see if you pay attention right there to the um, path marker it's it's slowly rising as we increase power now I'm going to decrease power and you'll see that it uh, will very slowly here start to drop there you go see how that uh, flight path marker is dropping now pretty rapidly <laughs> now if I kick on the flight path angle hold again give it a moment to stabilize now I've got the afterburner on full power there the nose is going to want to raise for a second but the computer will arrest it and you can see that that it's just not moving from now I've pulled all the power out and the nose again it's gonna take a moment for the computer to settle but it's not moving so that will keep your nose angle or your pitch angle set irregardless of your power settings okay let's see here Let's go to heading I want to fly north back towards the uh, ocean so up here I'm gonna punch in a heading uh, number so tree six zero you can see once I start to punch those numbers heading turn to H select which is heading select I'm gonna click heading select and that is set the heading select and set our heading to tree six zero so the jet is now automatically turning towards tree six zero um, the flight path attitude hold is on to assist in that uh, turn and I'm just managing my speed right now I guess I could turn the uh, ATC back on and I don't need to worry about the speed but this plane is now flying itself and it's going to turn towards tree 60 and then it's going to fly uh, it's going to roll out on that heading and just maintain that heading uh, hopefully tree 60 puts us no it's not going to put us where we need to be I need to be more like uh, I need to be more like 240 so let's change that right quick I'm gonna push two four four zero and then heading select again and she's gonna turn us to 240 once we get on heading uh, you can see the land out there well let me there's another th another thing we can do with the altitude here right now we're at 6800 that's pretty high click that barometric altitude and that's going to get us held on that attitude the jet is still turning towards the heading I selected a 240 well there's something else we can do with the altitude here let's say I want to drop it down to 4,000 I'm gonna click four 
zero, 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 and then click B Alt. That's going to change the desired altitude to 4,000. So if you're just flying around along and you just click the button, it's going to set whatever your current altitude is. If you punch in a number and then click the button, it's going to um, set for that altitude, and the jet is going to, you know, seek out that altitude. It's going to take a little while because that was significantly lower than we were, but that is an option. <clears throat> Now, um, just to expedite things, I think I'll go ahead and change this altitude to 5200, zero, 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 barometric. Whoops. Oh, let's just reset it here. There we go. 5570. So as I said earlier, barometric altitude hold, that's going to just stay at 5560 no matter what is going on underneath us. So as I turn inland here, and fly over the land, the aircraft is just going to maintain 5,570 feet. No big deal. Let's go ahead and speed up. Turn off my ATC. As you can see, it's doing a quite a good job there holding 5,570. And unfortunately, I'm on the pretty flat side of the continent here, but that's all right. We'll see that it does not... <coughs> does not change at all. I'm going to go ahead and select an altitude that's below 5,000 feet so we can get into the uh, radar altimeter. So let's do 4,800. Zero, zero. B alt. And now the aircraft is going to seek out 4,800 feet. There's coupled autopilot mode. I haven't had a chance to see if it's working or in here or not. It'll take me a little time, but with coupled mode, you can program waypoints and the aircraft will essentially fly your flight plan for you hands off. So, all right, you can see there the aircraft's, it's trying, the computer's trying to settle in at 4800. And boy, I want to fly over that way now, which is west. So let's go ahead and do a heading of 270. There's two. Seven zero heading select, and she's going to turn us west. Once we, once we get on course here, I'm going to go ahead and switch it into radar altimeter, and then you'll see as the ground kind of undulates underneath us, the plane will really, really be moving around a lot, trying to maintain that 4,800 feet. And um, it's pretty exacerbated in Arma, um, but it definitely works. Just about on speed, so I'm gonna go or on course. I'm gonna go ahead and click radar alt. Come on, there we go. 4801. So it's gonna hold 4801. I believe we're still over sea, yeah, but we're about to hit land, and you'll see it start to struggle. There it goes. Okay, so it's really um, putting a lot of control inputs in as that land goes. Uh, undulates underneath us and you'll see up here when we get into these mountains uh, it's really going to pull back on the stick a lot and then once we cross the mountains it's going to push forward on the stick a lot in order to try and maintain um, that altitude above the ground level see <laughs> uh, we just hit a mountain there so the control or the uh, computer said oh boy a lot of back stick now if I switch it back to uh, barometric altitude while we're over these mountains boom it's gonna it's gonna take a minute to seek that out, but uh, it does not care what's going on underneath us. It just maintains that alt altitude above sea level. All right, I'm going to demonstrate the coupled autopilot uh, here. So in order to do that, we need to create some waypoints. Uh, you can either create the waypoints in uh, the mission editor and then transfer them over using a mod, or we can create them right here in the cockpit which is what I want to do. So, <clears throat> in order to do that, we're going to go down here to our HSI, and we're going to click Data on this OSB. This gives us waypoint zero that we can edit. Uh, however, there are no other waypoints in the system, so let's add a couple of waypoints here. Do that by clicking Waypoint Sequence down here on this OSB. Boom. And then up here, we're going to push 1 to add waypoint 1, and then press insert. That adds waypoint 1. 
uh, as you can see now we can use this arrow is to select waypoint one let's go ahead and add two even though I'm not going to use it just to demonstrate two insert and now we can choose waypoint two okay let's go back to waypoint zero and we're going to edit this waypoint you can see it currently has coordinates we're going to change those and we need a grid reference in order to do that so I'm going to go ahead and add that grid to do that make sure we're on the waypoint we want to edit waypoint zero we are click UFC here now I'm going to input the grid one six three five one six whoops too many one six three five break one four eight five And then we're going to press grid. Before I press that, watch the coordinates here. You'll see once I press it, everything changes. Grid. Now we've got the updated grid there. I think you can probably use a six digit grid. I just, out of habit, use eight digit. Uh, there's no elevation assigned to this waypoint, so let's go ahead and assign an elevation of, uh, whoops, go back to that UFC. And then we're going to assign an elevation of 3000. Tree, zero, zero, zero elevation. Okay, that waypoint is set. Now we'll cycle to waypoint one and do the same thing. I'm going to input a grid a little bit slightly north of the airbase. So two, zero, six, five, tack, one, four, one, five, one, four, one, five, and then grid. I'm just starting to turn towards the airbase here. And then an elevation of, uh, let's say, 3,500 feet. 3,500 zero, zero elevation. That waypoint is populated. I'll go back to waypoint zero. Get turned around back towards the base here. OK, now we're going to do the couple autopilot here. So in order to do that, we have our waypoints programmed. I'm going to click the HSI page here. This OSB here for waypoint, I'm going to box waypoint. Now that that's boxed, on the autopilot page, we have this option here for coupled waypoint. I'm going to click coupled waypoint. The jet will kick into life, and we've got some information up here now. It's 7.6 miles to waypoint zero. Um, and then up here, this bar right here is a graphical representation of the waypoint and the jet is going to pull that bar into the center of the heading tape and fly towards that waypoint. I'm going to click sequence here just so I can see the waypoint. So up here is waypoint uh, zero that we programmed right off our nose now. The jet's pulling into it and turning into it. Um, as of now the jet is just going to fly towards whatever waypoint uh, we have selected here. So if I was to change this to waypoint one, the jet would turn over there towards waypoint one. Um, however, since we program multiple waypoints, we can click auto here, right here on this OSB, box auto, and now the flight computer will, once it passes through waypoint zero, it should automatically cycle to waypoint one, which is there, as you can see on the um, HSI. So as we pass through waypoint zero, which is above the airfield here, it should kick into, um, it should automatically cycle to waypoint one on the machine, or on the HSI rather, and the jet should turn towards waypoint one and automatically fly there. So we are approaching the waypoint now one mile to waypoint zero. We're on course. Everything looks good. Let's just watch down here and wait for the cycle. Point two miles, point one, and there. It automatically kicked to waypoint one. Now the jet has initiated a right turn over to waypoint one. Uh, it's going to bring that heading tape in and fly us right to waypoint one. So you could program multiple waypoints, two, three, four, all around the map. Go ahead and get yourself stable flight, click on your coupled waypoint, and the jet will f automatically fly itself all over. So as you can see there, we're now coupled up and flying towards waypoint one. That's it for coupled 
uh, autopilot. I hope this uh, video was useful to you. As always, you can drop any comments or questions in the video, and I will do my best to answer them. Next video coming up is going to be FLIR, so I'm going to look uh, deep dive into the targeting pod and weapons employment using the FLIR pod onboard systems. Thanks, guys. See ya.